While researching for this video, we found two distinct terms which are often used interchangeably, the tracking difference and the tracking error. We'll cover the tracking error in greater details in this video, but as investors, it is important for us to understand what a tracking difference means. A tracking difference is quite simply the difference between the performance of an index fund and the benchmark that it is tracking. For instance, let's say the Nifty 50 index gained by 5% this month. Correspondingly, the NEV of an index fund which tracks the Nifty 50 gained 4.5% during the same period. 4.5 minus 5 gives us a tracking difference of minus 0.5%. Interestingly, this tracking difference need not always be negative and sometimes we see a few index funds even outperforming the benchmark. So now that we know what a tracking difference is, let's move to the main event and understand what a tracking error is. Unlike how it is commonly perceived, the tracking error is not about performance but rather a tracking error is about the variability of performance. In other words, the tracking error indicates the consistency of a product's tracking difference during a time period. And on a mathematical basis, the tracking error is the annualized standard deviation of the tracking difference. Let's understand this better with a simple illustration. What we have here is the last five years returns of a Nifty 50 benchmarked index fund. This fund delivered returns of 11%, 3%, 12%, 14% and 8% in these 5 years. Correspondingly, let's say the Nifty 50 delivered annual returns of 12%, 5%, 13%, 9% and 7% in the same period. The first thing we do here is to plot the tracking difference which is quite simply the difference in returns. This gives us minus 1%, minus 2, minus 1, 5% and 1% across the years. The next step is to compute the standard deviation which can be done quite easily with any spreadsheet application and the standard deviation computes to 2.5% for this data set. The standard deviation of 2.5% is the tracking error of our index fund which clarifies what we said earlier. A tracking error is pretty much a volatility measure. And it is something that all index funds diligently track. In fact, here are the tracking errors of some popular index funds. Notice how there can be wide variations between funds tracking different indices and also between funds which track the same index. Now investors commonly consider tracking errors in fund selection decisions, but it's not as easy as it comes and one has to be extra careful about it and that's because when we started scanning the monthly fact sheets of different AMCs, we observed a lot of inconsistency in its reporting. For instance, some fund houses were very selective about reporting tracking errors. We found this very odd, but in fact, we found cases where the tracking error was reported for only some of the index schemes, but not for the other schemes that the same AMC had. The only explanation we could come up for that is that probably the non-reported schemes might not have aged enough for the AMCs to pull up an adequately accurate number. More importantly, we noticed that the methodology for calculating the tracking error was very different for different AMCs. Like in the case of HDFC's Nifty 50 index fund, the tracking error is calculated on the basis of the daily rolling returns for the previous 12 months. However, ICICI Prudential's Nifty Index Fund computes tracking error in a completely different way by taking three years of data instead of one year, as in the case of HDFC. And secondly, the ICICI Index Fund uses the month-end NAV, while HDFC uses the daily rolling returns. These are big differences in methodologies and it's very likely to produce different non-comparable results. So as an investor, here are your options. You either account for this pliability of statistics when comparing funds or you can pull out the historical NAV information from the AMC website and do the tracking error calculations yourself on a spreadsheet. And now that we've used the word tracking like a hundred times in this video, I wonder if you've been tracking us on YouTube. 
because if you haven't subscribed to the ET Money YouTube channel, then tap on that subscribe button and join our community of 1.5 lakh subscribers who access some really wonderful content on mutual funds, investing and other personal finance topics that we post at least twice a week on this channel. There are many reasons that lead to tracking errors. Let's look at three important factors starting with reason number one and that is the mutual fund expenses. Now expenses can't be avoided. There's a cost of buying and selling stocks, management expenses, administration of the fund, etc. And as a thumb rule, higher the expenses, the greater might be the tracking error. It is the fund manager's job to keep the tracking error at its lowest and they do this by using a number of techniques which includes rebalancing the portfolio, managing dividends, lending securities, using index futures and even temporarily investing in fixed income products. A second reason which leads directly to the tracking error is the cash balance in the index funds. It is a known fact that most if not all mutual fund schemes are never 100% invested at any given time. What I mean is they leave aside anywhere from 2 to 5% in cash or highly liquid debt instruments that can then take care of redemptions. Likewise, any declaration of dividend or a sudden surge in investment inflows means there is more cash to work with and the fund house is likely to take some more time to reinvest this money which will then show up in the tracking error calculations. And a third reason which leads to tracking errors is the inability to buy or sell the underlying index stocks due to sudden market movements or poor liquidity. The imbalance caused by a larger than normal bid ask spread increases the level of volatility which then has a bearing on the tracking error. The situation can generally be seen in sectoral or thematic funds which tend to have a larger tracking error. Alright, so what should investors do? For one, investors need to start viewing the tracking error as an indicator of how actively a fund is being managed and its corresponding risk level. In fact, instead of looking at just the present number, investors should look to study the tracking error across a few quarters, which will give a great signal into the risk control practices of the fund and help understand if the scheme might be taking unwarranted risks buying stocks out of the weightage or holding on to more cash. Which means if the tracking errors are high, then the purpose of index itself might come into question and it is something that investors need to be wary of. In essence, it is most ideal to invest in an index fund which has a low tracking error, but it need not be the lowest. In fact, if it pleases you, one can make the selection process more scientific by giving a higher weightage to those index funds whose tracking error is lower than the average of all other index funds that carry the same benchmark. This way you don't need to commit yourself to the lowest tracking error fund and then give yourself a wider depth of options by settling for a fund which has a lower than average tracking error. That's one way to do it and I sure hope this helps. And with this we come to the end of the short but practical video. To invest in a wide choice of direct plan index funds, do download the ET Money app and give your money the opportunity to grow with our track, analyze and buy functionalities. The app not only helps you invest in mutual funds, but is one of the most preferred destinations for fixed deposits, starting an NPS account and for enrolling to health and term insurance plans. And if you like this presentation, then do subscribe to the ET Money YouTube channel and help us spread the good word by sharing it over WhatsApp, Facebook and Twitter with your friends and connections. Thank you for your time and we look forward to catching up with you next week with another insightful video. Until then. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.